we can all understand, particularly me. <laughs> Suppose your mom bakes a big blueberry pie. Now that pie represents the wealth of this country. Now take that pie and divide it in half. The top half is for defense spending. The bottom half is for domestic programs and the other half is for the national <laughs> debt. Uh, Mr. President, I don't think uh, anyone here understood that. Did anyone here understand? Oh, I understand it perfectly. It's my program, too. Maggie. Maggie's and Maggie's back in town. Good to meet you, man. Uh, why don't you give me some skin? <laughs> well, you can see I've been practicing. Yes. Uh, jolly good show. Uh, uh, pip, pip, and all that rot. Yes. I can see you haven't. <laughs> well, Mr. President. No. You can call me Ron. And you can call me Mrs. Thatcher. <laughs> you know, I met your husband this morning. Yes. And um, uh, I was very curious about one thing that he said to me. Mm -hmm. That you insist that he sleep each night on the right side of the bed. That's correct. I never give in to the left. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, listen, uh, oh, uh, Maggie, uh, yes. you know, I can remember yes. uh, the very first time that we met uh, really? two years ago in Washington. As a matter of fact, I, I can remember it as if it was yesterday really? because uh, we met at eight. We met at nine. You were late. I was on time. Ah, yes. I remember it well. We dined with friends. We dined alone. A tenor sang. A baritone. Ah, yes. I remember it well. You wore a gown of gold. I was all in blue. <laughs> Am I getting old? That's true. <laughs> how young you were. How strong and gay. Well, strong maybe, but not gay. <laughs> A prince of love in every way. My goodness, you've been talking to Nancy. Oh. <laughs> ah, yes. We remember, remember it well. Dear Ronnie, your knighthood is in the post. <laughs> Terrific that fun. fun. It was a joy to watch right. that. That is excellent. And the fact that you two what, met yesterday. Oh, yes, for the first, first time. time. The first, first time. Because you should have met Rich, because you've been to the States very recently, haven't yes, you? Yes, actually, I only came back a couple of weeks ago from L.A. And Ooh. it was my first time. Mm. I must say, I was very excited about it. Now, it's uh, quite a little complicated story, but it was great fun. Yes. First of all, the Johnny Carson office got in touch with me and said they'd like to bring me out to America and that they wanted to play a joke on an American artist 
uh, called Joni Rivers. Now, some of the audience may have seen her, and Rich will know her very well. Of she's, uh, to explain to the audience, she's a terrifically big star in America, very big, and she takes over from Johnny Carson and she hosts the show. And she's very volatile, very Jewish Brooklyn, you know, hello, and she tells stories about the royal family. Put down and jokes. Oh, terribly. She's outrageous about the royal family. Have you, have you seen Princess Anne? Have you seen Princess She's a horse. She's got to be a horse. <laughs> have you seen her? I said, how many children you got, Princess Anne? She went, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, but it is it's astounding to us, Rich. This, uh, people have read in the paper, I'm sure you've seen it, there's a, a, an American comedy star uh, going for the royal family, brutally going for the... But this is it. I, I couldn't is. believe the thing she said. You know, she said something about the queen. I never met the queen in my life. I've only seen her picture on a stamp. So I went up and licked the back of her head. <laughs> Why am I laughing? I'll get deported. <laughs> but this is what she's all about. You know, can we talk? Can we talk? Anyway, they said, they said, what we want to do is we want to play this joke on her. So they conned her into believing that Johnny Carson was giving a dinner in Las Vegas and that he had left his private jet for her at the airport, you see? So she falls for all this, she believes it, she goes along to the airport. In the meantime, I've been up the other day before and they said, now here's the VIP lounge, but we're going to build our own VIP lounge. So they took me into this room and they said, it's a shambles, but you just wait till tomorrow and you will see it. And they had the ceiling, they were taking the ceiling down, putting up their own lighting. They installed up. Uh, they installed the cameras behind mirrors and behind pictures. So this was a candid camera. The whole stuff. thing, just like a candid camera. Anyway, they set this up. They got the room absolutely marvelous. She arrived at the airport and they said to her at the desk, I'm terribly sorry, Miss Rivers. There's a little bit of a delay because Mrs. Thatcher's on her way through. <laughs> <laughs> This is nothing right here. He said, Mrs. Thatcher's on her way through. Would you mind waiting up in the VIP lounge? And you might possibly meet her. She may have to stop in the lounge. So she's sitting there all quietly with her friend. So I go across and say, how do you do, Mr. And she says, oh, how do you Mrs. Thatcher? She's my husband, Edgar. This is my manager. <laughs> These are my friends. I think, hard to do, hard to do, hard to do. And the director said, at all costs, uh, you mustn't let her husband sit next to you because we've got the cameras trained. We want you sitting right next to her. It'll spoil our shots. If he goes to sit down, move him. We don't care how you do it. <laughs> Just move him. So, of course, he goes to sit down. I said, do you mind if I sit next to your charming wife? So he's got to go and sit elsewhere. See, you just room. yanked him up. Yeah, yeah. Go. <laughs> and I can't believe it's this woman. So we go along talking nice things about the weather here in Los Angeles, how I'm enjoying it. And then I suddenly said, I thought, I think it's about time to move in here. So I said, um, I don't know, one of my aides, I don't know which one, was kind enough to let me hear some of your material. Yeah. And I've found it absolutely disgusting about our royal family. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have seen her. She said, oh, 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 oh God, uh, uh, call me a court jester. Just call me a court jester. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I can hardly do that. You are much too charming to call your court jester. But you know your remarks about the royal family. And having listened to the tapes, she also says about the English, she says, you can't understand what the English say. They go, fa, 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 fa. <laughs> I believe, Miss Rivers, you have great difficulty understanding what the English say, <laughs> that somehow they seem to go for, for, for. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, can you understand what I'm saying? Oh, sure, Mrs. Oh, I understand you perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. <laughs> Then, as I got stronger and said, but the remarks you've been making, you know, up till now, relations between our two countries, President Reagan and myself, and I'm piling it on, and she says, don't forget, we fought for you, we fought for you. <laughs> Edgar, come over and sit next to me, Edgar. <laughs> and I said, no, no, just like Dennis, you can stay where he is. <laughs> And so on we went with all this business, you see, going on, till finally, in desperation, she said, I promise I will never do this material again, never, never, you see. 
So in my handbag, there was a letter from Johnny Carson. And uh, I said, well, I still feel you don't understand what I'm saying to you. So I would like you to read this letter. She's like, here, here, she fished for her glasses. And of course, the note said, dear Joni, this is just a joke. And we hope you take it as such. And if you don't, we don't care, uh, you know. So... <laughs> and you know, she was marvelous. She looked at this letter and, and she, she looked at me and she said, wait, wait. Well, if your name is that, well, if your name is that, who are you? Who are you? And she roared with laughter. And she said, "Well, never mind. Let's have our picture saved. For God's sake, I'll have it for the top of my piano." Can you capture her voice in just a, a, uh, a meeting? You like do that now? extremely well. That's very close. Uh, the very only voice close. I would like to practice. It I can only moment. think of one voice that is beyond perhaps even your powers, Rich, or, or yours, Janet, and that's uh, my special guest tonight. Bob Hope. I don't think either oh, of us... Oh, well, we, we couldn't... Oh, uh, he's one of a kind. You can't you, do Bob Hope. couldn't hope to do his voice. But I tell you what, we, we could do his songs. We could do that. Yeah, there's some right. wonderful songs Bob's associated with. Do you remember a film called Thanks for the Memory with Shirley Ross? And he sang this. Here we are, <laughs> out of cigarettes. Holding hands and yawning. Look how late it gets. Two, Two sleepy people. people. By dawn's early light And too much in love to, to say goodnight Oh, oh, oh that, uh, that sounds like buttons and bows That sounds like the old groaner there The old groaner Bing Crosby from Pale Face East is east and west is west And the wrong one I have chose Let's go where I'll keep on Where are those frills and flowers and buns and bows Rings and things and buns and bows And whatever road Bing and Bob set out on We knew it was a road to fun A one, two, three, we're off on the road to Morocco To Bali and Zanzibar Whatever road they took, we knew it lead to lobster law. And it was ten to one, they beat Dorothy LaFour. Well, we certainly didn't get her out. Like Webster's Dictionary, we 